This is a skunk. A lot of people hate them, mainly because they smell terrible, they look like a weird cat, and a lot of times you'll find them living up underneath your porch. With that being said, I wanted to challenge myself not only to catch a skunk, but also to cook it up into something that people actually want to eat. I don't think this is going to be easy, but let's get started. And since there's not really a way to hunt skunks, that pretty much narrows us down to trapping. And to do that, we're going to be using a cage trap, also called a live trap because it keeps them alive. I like using cage traps for skunks because it's really low stress on them, and the lower stress you can get a skunk, the less likely he's gonna spray. Long story short, you put bait in the back, the critter comes through, steps on this pan back here, door falls down, he can't get out. It's literally the perfect trap. But before we set these traps, we need to know two important things about skunks. One, where do skunks actually live? Skunks live underground, whether that be under some rocks, in a burrow, or sometimes under your porch. We're gonna try setting a trap over here by all these rocks because there's always a good chance there could be a skunk living up under. And another important question we need to know is what do skunks eat? And the answer to that's kind of complicated because it's kind of everything. They'll eat anything from eggs, chickens, mice, bugs, roots, scavenge stuff. Yeah, they'll pretty much eat anything, which makes our job really easy because we're just gonna use dog food. You know, I really don't think that catching a skunk's gonna be the hard part, but I do predict it's gonna be pretty hard to keep raccoons and possums out of my traps. I'm expecting to catch a few possums, maybe a raccoon, before we even catch our first skunk. But that is just part of the game. And since with trapping, the more traps you have out, the better. We have a couple more traps that we're gonna set in a couple more areas. And hopefully that should just increase our odds triple. What? If I catch a skunk, will you eat it? Okay. Another fun fact about skunks is that they're actually one of the most profitable animals a trapper can trap. It's not because of their fur, definitely not because of their meat, but it's because of their skunk essence, aka the skunk spray, the stuff you smell when you smack one with your car. And believe it or not, they use skunk spray to put in fragrances to make them last longer. Yes, that's true, according to Google. So if I'm wrong, that's Google's fault. No, matter. But yeah, there we go. One, two, three traps are set. Now it's just time to wait and hope that a skunk walks in our trap. After night one of having the trap set, we didn't catch anything. However, on day two, the action was starting to pick up. All right, guys, it's check day two, and we caught our first animal. Let's go. And it's a possum. Yep, it's a possum. I knew this was coming. I literally called it yesterday. Hey, guys, we're going to catch a few possums before we even get close to a skunk. Turns out it wasn't too far off. This is the first trap I've checked today, so I don't know. Maybe this little dusting of snow had the animals moving last night. But as for this possum, we actually ate a possum last year in this video. Honestly, it turned out it was edible. Okay, that's about as far as I'll go with it. But right now, I'm not really in the mood to eat another possum. So I'm going to just take care of this guy, and we're going to move on and check the rest of the traps. The next couple traps didn't have anything in them. But last night, I did get this video of a skunk walking around, so that could be some hope that they're starting to move. However, also on my trail cam, Camera, I got this video right here. Yes, that's a coyote, and yes, I believe that's a house cat in its mouth. Now that trail camera picture came from here, the new farm. I don't have any cats here, but my neighbor does. Or I guess technically now, they don't either. But it's kind of crazy, because about a week ago, I was walking around here shed hunting, and I found this, a pile of coyote dookie. But what's important is what's in the coyote dookie. It's short black hair. Now you tell me in nature what has short black hair. Not a bear, not a skunk, not a crow. That's one of two things. Somebody's dog or somebody's cat. I've been seeing a weird theme lately where coyotes are like targeting people's pets. I guess they're super easy prey. But long story short, I bet y'all see where this is going. I'm a trapper. I think I can catch that sucker. All right. Let's get started. The trap I'm going to be setting is an MB550, the premier coyote trap and foothold. And I'm going to be setting what we call a dirt hole set. It's really simple. It's what I catch 90% of my coyotes on. It's pretty much a hole with some bait in it and then a trap covered up underground just out from the hole. That way, whenever the coyote goes to investigate the hole, he steps his foot right down in the trap and it holds him there until we can get there the next day. Just like skunk trapping, coyote trapping's the same. Strength in numbers, the more traps we can get out, the better chance we're going to catch something. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go around the place, set a few more traps, and if we're lucky, here in the next week sometime, we'll catch that coyote. Check day three, and unfortunately, our skunk traps are still empty. But luckily, not every trap was empty this morning. Uh-oh, boys, looks like we got one. 
A big old code. Let's go. That's perfect. Dude, I cannot believe this. We caught this coyote in one day. That usually never happens. Like, literally never. This is one of those traps that I set last night. Boom, straight in the ground. Today, we got a coyote. I don't know what the deal is, but that worked way too good to be true. I don't know what the deal is. But, uh-oh, he's gonna try growling. What are you gonna do, buddy? Hey, okay, I see you. I got you, I got you. I'll back up, I'll back up. Not a bad, oh gosh, son, look at that. Now, can I confirm that this is the coyote that killed my neighbor's cat? Technically, no. However, I don't think anybody's going to be complaining that I took this coyote off the census. One coyote down, as many more as we can possibly get to go. Check day four. Once again, our skunk traps are empty. However, to my disbelief, we caught a skunk in a different trap. Oh, boys. Well, I got good news and bad news. Good news, we caught a skunk. Bad news, it ain't the right kind of trap. And this could end up very badly for us. So as y'all been seeing, we've been setting these cage traps. This keeps them alive. It keeps them stress free. They're, they're really easy to work with. And if you catch a skunk in one of these, your likelihood of getting sprayed is pretty low if you handle the situation right. Well, this trap is not one of those traps. Right there's the skunk. I don't, okay, yeah, he's lifting his head up now. We gotta watch and make sure he don't lift his tail up. If he lifts his tail up, we gotta bounce, dude. I don't know if you can tell, but we didn't catch this guy in a cage trap. We actually caught him in a snare. A snare is this kind of trap, which is where they walk through it and it kind of cinches down around their neck. However, this trap was meant for coyotes, not a little bitty skunk. And that could make this guy pretty stressed out because he's not dead yet. He's starting to lift up his tail. This can end really badly. I was, you know, expecting a cage trap. I can handle one in a cage trap before. I've done it multiple times. I've even let them go. Okay, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That was bad. I was looking straight down his butt crack. That is not where you want to be with a skunk. All right, I'm leaving, dude. I'll be back in a minute. I gotta go think of something. I have a plan. Abram, I need a plan. See that? Yeah. You know what that is? A skunk. So what do we do? I don't know. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to yeah, do. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. No. Abram's slowly realizing what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a fox up until this point. If they're not stressed out already, Headshot, probably gonna spray nine out of 10 times. Lung shot, they're gonna spray one out of 10 times. So even if we get a lung shot, he's already freaked out. So, I mean, there's a great chance he's gonna spray no matter what we do. I'm gonna just be honest with you guys. If this guy sprays, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do anything with him. All right, Abram, you stand at a fa safe distance. I'm gonna go in and do what I gotta do. Okay. All right, here you go. We're going with a 22 subsonic suppressed. So it should be quiet, and hopefully it'll just feel like something bit him, and he won't think much of it. Because, hey, if a spider bites a skunk, he ain't going to spray the spider, okay? That's what we're going for, hoping for. Yo, his tail is sticking straight up. You smell anything yet? I smell the whiff of something. Oh God, he looks like he's going oh. down. Yeah, he's relaxing, he's relaxing. No, he I sprayed, he yeah. sprayed. Dang, dude. No, man. He sprayed, I can't believe that, dude. There's not much you can do about that though. There's really not. When he's in that situation, all you can do is do your best, which we did, just so happens. This guy sprayed. I don't know. I'm gonna wait a couple hours and come back and reassess the situation. All right, guys, we're riding back in to check on it. I hate to do this, but I'm just gonna say, 
if it smells extremely bad, I'm probably not going to mess with it. I don't know. It may not have sprayed. It may have just farted. The critter is right there, and he's definitely done for. <laughs> he definitely sprayed, but he didn't spray bad enough. I think we're going to eat him. Let's go, baby. Make sure he's dead. Let's think and go, baby. We got us a skunk. They're very different than a raccoon or a possum. They're actually so different. But although these guys kind of look like a striped possum, they're actually quite a bit different. You can take a look at it in front of his claws. These guys are diggers. They'll dig down to get stuff they want. And as for the pee, oh yeah, they got some. Now, before we skin this skunk, we want to make sure a knife's super sharp. I'm going to be using the KG Pocket Knife, and I'm going to be sharpening it with the brand new KG Knife Sharpener. It's pretty cool. But with these skunks, there's a lot of things that if you accidentally nick the wrong piece, bro, you messed up. Because if you nick the wrong spot, no one's going to talk to you for at least three weeks. Got here. It's literally the next day since we caught that skunk. And guess what we magically have in our live trap? A skunk. We don't need this skunk, so I'm going to let him go. You can see. Just look at him. Him being in a cage trap, he is way more comfortable. Like, we're pretty close to him, and he's not even thought about raising his tail. So, since we're going to let this guy go, I'm going to put y'all on the tripod, and I'm going to show you how to let a skunk go. Because it's not very hard if you do it right. So, if y'all are out trapping and you catch a skunk, it's pretty easy to let him out the trap number one rule don't freak out because he'll freak out that's pretty much it and if he starts to stick his tail up get out of the way ta-da I'm not going to force this guy out of there because that's just a bad idea. I ain't going to kick the trap or nothing. I'm just going to leave the door open and let him figure it out. So, yeah, that's pretty much how you let a skunk out of the trap. Now, let's go back to the house. Let's cook up the skunk we caught yesterday. Uh, this is going to be something. All right, it's game day. We're cooking the skunk. I think the worst part about it is that this boy's been skinned up and I can still smell him. So. Oh, I could smell it when you got it out of the fridge. Yeah, yeah. I, that might be that might make it hard to eat. But we are doing it in the Instapot. I have cooked and eaten skunk twice. And I'm pretty determined to make this one a little bit better. I don't know if I will, but I, I hope I'm, that's the plan. Anyway, first thing, we're gonna go ahead and put the legs in there. And then we're gonna put a lot of seasoning on there. We're using mullet man. This smells really good. The skunk smells really bad. What kind of seasoning is that line? I just said, mullet man. All right, there we go. Seasoned up, we're gonna let her fly. Insta pot, cook it down, we'll see what it looks like when he pops out. We'll go from there. All right, we're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never done that before. I don't think it pressurized. No, it did something. Buddy, she's done. You ready to gnaw on it? <laughs> you can. Put your camera over here, look at this. I don't know if it's done or not. I don't know what temperature you're supposed to cook this gun. Oh gosh, I bet they could have something bad, couldn't they? It's fine, it's fine. Stop! Stop filming me! Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're eating it, not me. I ain't eating it. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. It looks green. It is green. I don't know why it's fluorescent yellow on the edges. But... Yep.
You need to try it. Mm -mm. No, you can taste the skunk pee in there.